So about a month ago, I got a comment on my collab tutorial, basically asking me if I could go in depth on some of the things I did in Photoshop to make my collabs look a little nicer. In the original collab, I kind of said some surface level things as I did them in the background, but I didn't really explain in depth how you should do them or how to do them. In this video, I'm going to kind of show you what that process looks like. Now, this doesn't have to be explicitly for collabs, it could be for anything else. It could be generally a graphic design tutorial, but for the sake of demonstration, we're going to be turning this into an Osu collab. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is find an image that you're going to be using for your collab. I just found this official Genshin Impact art, and I think this will work fine. Now, you're going to want to make sure to resize this so that it actually fits the image and has a good composition. Obviously, you can do this however you'd like, as it's your creation, whatever you want. The first thing I like to do is actually to create some depth, and by that I mean usually I add a border of some kind, like a white box. I usually put this in the corner, somewhere like that's good, duplicating it so that way it fits pretty nicely and doesn't take up too much of the composition itself. Now as you can see the character on the right actually it, the box is going a little bit too far over her head so what I like to do is turn the opacity down on this square up here and actually just go through with either the selection tool or you could just do an eraser if you'd like and just kind of outlining the parts of her head which should be overlaid on it. Now actually something to mention before I should uh, do that is that if you want to add a drop shadow onto this kind of layer it is best that you do it before you cut out any parts of the character's heads because when you add it after it will look like the drop shadow is going over her head not behind so we had a small drop shadow and then we can right click and rasterize this layer meaning that the drop shadow is actually part of the shape now so when we go back and cut it out it will cut out the drop shadow too making it look like it has a lot more depth so once you have that selected, you can kind of just delete that and then turn the layer to full opacity. And as you can see, uh, it does look like there is more depth to it. Uh, it looks a little bit weird because you can't really see this going down here, but uh, it looks fine for now. Uh, you can do the same thing with the drop shadow for the one at the bottom too. Something else you can do is not the entire character, but you see some things you can also cut out of the image as well. I'm going to take her fingers for example and just kind of cut those out of this white box. It kind of makes it look like it has a little bit more depth. Now once you're done messing with this kind of thing you could skip this step entirely if you don't like it. Um, something I like to do is once the layers are rasterized I do like to merge them. You can keep them separate uh, completely up to you. Something else you can do is go up to filter and noise and add noise and you can add a little bit of a grain kind of texture. I do very much like using the grain textures but uh, that's completely up to you. I will eventually add some onto the main image but not quite yet. Now the second thing I like to do next is always tweaking the colors. Now you don't have to be too meticulous with this it does not have to be perfect but uh, Generally, if you hold uh, Alt, Left Alt, and click anywhere on the screen, you can use the eyedropper tool and pick up any color. I usually pick up, you know, the color of the character's hairs, and you kind of just want to overlay this kind of like a paintbrush. You know, it doesn't have to be too uh, perfect, but uh, after turning that layer to overlay, and then maybe down to like 70% opacity, you can see it makes an obvious difference right away how much this kind of makes a vibrant feel. Now you don't want to just kind of paint over it like however you'd like. Uh, there is kind of a consistency to it like as you can see there is darks up here on the outsides of her hair so you know kind of going dark on this side maybe over here you know wherever the shadows are naturally on the original image you kind of just want to mimic those so we have some light right here maybe do some light on this side of her head up here maybe and generally that will make your image pop a lot more instead of looking so flat. Now again this does not have to be perfect like this is already pretty good maybe I'll go down here and do some of this yellow and uh, yeah that already looks nice so it's a completely different feel to how it was before. 
Now, maybe this is too vibrant for you. You could still turn down the opacity, like, let's do try 40. Yeah, even 40%. I think I'm going to keep it somewhere around 55. That's still a world of difference, and personally, I think it looks a lot better. Now, you're just going to want to replicate that around the whole image, and do whatever you like, however you feel. Make whatever colors you'd want to pop out. You can also create a second layer and make the opacity a little bit higher as with this character the po colors aren't popping as much so to make it easier for the colors to pop I am actually making this layer about 80% opacity. Now that that's done for both characters, I'll actually group these by clicking Ctrl G and that creates a group when you have both of them selected. Now we can kind of just toggle them off and see what the difference looks like when it's on versus when it's off. This kind of lets you critically look at the colors that you did and personally I don't really like how the left character's face is colored so I'm going to go back with the eraser tool and just kind of get rid of a little bit of that. Personally, I like that a lot more. Now, I'm actually going to add the grain filter to the back image as of now. Now, how much noise you want in the background kind of depends on the style you're going for. I've had ones where it's very high, like this, and that's kind of the style that I like. Whereas some of them, you kind of want a more clean feel, and this is something that I like to do. So around here, this is good. It's a little bit grainy, but it's a little bit clean, you know? It's a good mix of both. I'm actually going to turn that down a little bit. Now we're going to add some color correction to the image and this is going to make the most difference in terms of the aesthetics. There are various ways of making your own color corrections and if you're interested in that I would definitely recommend searching up how to do that. But uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, one of the easiest things you can do is just google color correction pack and just download ones you like and I have this one uh, from Signfox Live. I don't know where I got this or how long ago, it had to have been years at this point, but the thing I like to do is to just duplicate all of these layers by right clicking and duplicating and dragging them to the top of uh, my layers. So once you have that dragged to the top of your layers, uh, you just kind of want to kind of click this eyeball and uh, on any of these side uh, color corrections and they will just change the appearance of how your collab looks. You're just going to want to keep messing around with them, seeing which ones look good, which ones don't look good. And it's okay to use multiple, like I kind of like this like soft warmth uh, color that this one brings, but I don't think it's enough on its own. So I will also add something like this. This one made the, the shadows a lot darker, um, but I don't like how dark they made them. So you can always just take the opacity and change that a little bit down. And yeah, it's really up to you how to mix and match these how you want. Anything really goes, just kind of mess with it until you get something you like. Okay, so once you have the color correction how you like it, I just like to select all of these and group them into a layer again by hitting Control G. And as you can see, it makes a big difference of the shadows and the colors whenever you equip this. Something else you can additionally do is select the original image and go to filter and then camera raw filter and this is just going to have the original image without all of the layered effects that are above it but you can just kind of mess with the shadows and the highlights. I wouldn't recommend going too far away from the original values just because it can mess with it in a way that would be too strong like if I turn the highlights all the way up it's just it's a little bit too much or if I turn the shadows all the way it's a little bit too much so stick close to the middle but you can adjust these if you'd like. One final thing I will say about coloring is that you can go through with these colors once again and just kind of do a final sweep of any coloring you'd like on the main image. This doesn't have to be lighting the characters, this could just be darks and lights so that way your image kind of pops a little bit. Now once you have something like this going on, you're pretty close to done. I would say the final thing you really need to worry about is adding the text in. And this is kind of a tricky part because there are various fonts or layer styles that you can add to the text that make it look good and sometimes it can be tricky to make it look like it fits within the image. If you don't want to add text to it at all, you don't have to actually. This would work perfectly fine. But for the sake of demonstration, we're going to add text. I usually add text to mine anyway. 
Now, I believe this is Ganyu from Genshin. So we can just go with the characters' names for the sake of this. If you're out of fonts, there is this website I would recommend going to. It's called defonts.com, and there are a ton of free fonts on here. Just uh, what I like to do is go to top or new fonts and just kind of search around for ones that you like and anything will really do as long as it fits your theme. Something that can make your life a lot easier when selecting fonts is actually to just get the layer style out of the way before you select a font. I usually like to have a small drop shadow at the bottom and then you can do a gradient overlay and if you have the most recent edition of Photoshop, those should come with some pre-made colors. You can also make your own down here if you'd like. I think we're going to go with blue and purple respectively for each character, just because I think it matches the style. Now I think this is a good blue, but I don't actually think they're different enough, so I'm actually going to go and make this a lot lighter of a blue, and make these a little bit darker, just so that it pops a little bit more and is a little bit more obvious that there's even a gradient there in the first place. Now you can kind of mess with this however you want, there's different styles of gradients that you can use. I usually just like to use the linear one. You can also add a stroke if you'd like, but strokes usually don't really look that well unless they're very small and you know what you're doing with them, but a lot of people who are new to this kind of thing tend to just throw strokes on everything and it makes everything look a little bit too forced. Now after reconsidering, I actually think that white is going to be the best color for this specific character and probably over here too because as you can see, that blue didn't really fit well and it kind of meshed too much with this character's hair. And I can't really see a darker color looking any better just because it might be hard to read. So I think we're going to stick with white for now. Something that I do like to do is underneath the text layer, you can take a darker color and then turn that to like an overlay or any of these kind of soft lights would be a good one too. You can kind of just mess with the opacity. Don't make it too dark and forced because then it's going to be obvious that there's just a giant dark spot behind the, the text and you don't want that. And you can kind of just move around the text however you'd like in the image. When you think you've got a good text lined up, you can actually just duplicate that over to the other side and just rename the text to the next name. Now, this example is a little bit difficult to see where we'd want the text to be at. We could put it at the top of the character's head, which I don't think is too bad, but I'm not sure if I like that just yet. We could obviously make it a lot smaller, but I do like to keep them the same size just for consistency's sake. Alright, so I don't think this is the best text placement in the world, but since this is just a demonstration, I feel like it's good enough. So if I was making this collab for real, I probably wouldn't settle for this, but I think this will be fine for now. Now, once you're at this stage, you're pretty much done. There are a few things you can still do. One glaring thing I see that's a problem with this in particular is that it is just very, very white. And the background's white, these boxes are white. I feel like we should kind of darken it up a little bit. Something you can always do is just kind of roughly mark the background, the white background pieces with uh, a dark color. It does not have to be perfect, again, because we're going to make this a overlay layer. Even just turning the opacity down as a normal style layer, this can work. As long as you make sure that the inconsistencies are covered. So for instance, like up here, it's very, it's very light still, or on her hair right here. It doesn't have to be perfect, again. It's not that big of a deal if there are some tiny inconsistencies. I think it looks a lot better with the dark in the back. We could go and just kind of touch these up a little bit more. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, you can kind of just come up here and just erase any dark parts you come over. And that should turn out fine. All right, so that's about everything I usually do when I'm creating a collab. Obviously, there are a ton more things you could be doing to change up the feel or literally do anything else. This kind of thing has infinite possibilities and I could not possibly cover all of them. Once you have everything completed, uh, something I like to do is just to group everything into the same layer and we can just call this collab or something just to make it clear that this is like everything that we've done so far. 
and I usually like to just duplicate that so we have two of them. Now we can make the bottom one invisible and just kind of merge this group together so we still have a backup of everything we've done and we can still change everything but uh now we have just one flat image right here and this should be the image that you use for your collab now i won't be going into how to actually put this on your profile or anything because i actually have a separate video and if you're watching this you're probably already aware of that now that's everything i have for showing you what i generally do when i make collabs now if you have any questions just ask in the comments and i will answer if i have a solution or if I can leave feedback in any way, but uh, that's about it for now, and I hope this was helpful.